Hey there, my name's Chris and welcome to Cross Chop. It's been about two years since my last game room tour and since I did that one, I've moved. In the spring I bought my first house and I was fortunate enough to be able to move all my games and systems and my computer into one of the bedrooms that we got. Back at the old apartment, all of my systems and my games were spread out between two rooms, our living room and a spare bedroom that also doubled as a home office and my closet and it led to the back deck. <laughs> so it wasn't really the ideal kind of setup for a game room, which makes me extra grateful and excited to share with you this room here because it's a great place for playing games, watching movies, and editing cross job videos. Since my last game room tour, I've added more than 300 video games to my physical game library, and that spans 22 systems and a total of more than 900 video games. As you're about to see when we go through this door, the new space available in a dedicated game room created opportunities for the room to be much more comfortable and just much more of a fun place to hang out and enjoy this hobby. I'm really excited to be able to share this tour of my game room setup with you today, and uh, let's go ahead, shall we? All right guys, here's a quick overview of my new game room. As you can see, the room itself is about the size of an average bedroom, but thankfully the ceilings are pretty high, around nine feet or so. This room is only a little smaller than the master bedroom in my new house, which has two windows in it, so I'm actually pretty glad that I've got this room and not our guest bedroom, which is considerably smaller. It's kind of a small thing, but I'm really glad to have carpet over every part of the room. It helps deaden the echo that would have been in here otherwise, so it's a much better room for recording and listening to audio when I'm making videos than the hardwood floored rooms throughout my old apartment were. Speaking of deadening audio, this couch being in here helps with that too, in addition to being a comfy place to sit for some games or a movie. It's an older couch, and actually was the couch my girlfriend and I used for a few years in our living room before we upgraded to a new IKEA model. It gets a little saggy if you sit in one place for too long, so you kind of have to reposition your body on it every once in a while to avoid getting stiff. But hey, it's here, it's cushy, and it works. These pillows and plushes come from a variety of different places. I got Mario and the Goomba a few years ago from Vintage Stock, a Midwestern retail chain. The Hylian Shield and Mushrooms are from ThinkGeek.com, and the three pillows came from a couple of different Etsy stores. They brighten up the dull gray couch somewhat and add a little character to the room, I think. The TV across from the couch is a 55-inch Samsung 4K TV, a 2016 model I bought from Best Buy that has worked great with movies, games, and streaming video. I got it a few months after I did my first game room tour, and it's made a big difference in my setup. I've posted the model number down in this video's description if you're curious about it. As you can see, the TV takes up most of the surface area of this entertainment center, but there's still enough room up here for me to plug in some smaller flat systems like the Sega Genesis if I want to get it out, for example. Despite having more than 20 consoles in my collection, I only keep five plugged in to this TV at all times. And that's the GameCube, the Nintendo 64, the Super Nintendo, PS3, and the PS4. When I'm not playing anything, I keep these console dust covers over the top of them so that no pet hair and dust and things like that get on top of them. The N64 and Super Nintendo covers fit perfectly over the systems, and they even have their respective logos printed on them, which is a nice touch. The GameCube and PlayStation ones are much more generic, but they still do the job. The covers with the console logos come from an Etsy store, and the other ones come from another website, and I'll include those in the video description if you're interested. Although I have three different GameCube systems, I use this Indigo one as my main console, largely because it's the same color as the one I had in my teenage years. I have it connected to my TV via an HDMI adapter I bought in 2017, and it's been awesome to play my GameCube games at their highest quality level on original hardware with no modification. Next up is my N64. Thanks to my pal Jake, a fellow St. Louisan and also known as Zebular on YouTube, this one is RGB modified, which has made a huge difference in playing my N64 games on a modern TV. Along with that RGB mod, I run a sync on Luma SCART cable from the N64 to this little black converter box on the top of the entertainment center, which then connects to the TV with an HDMI cable. Now, this little box has been a game changer for me ever since I bought it about four years ago. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably are familiar with RGB SCART and the improvements that it can do for the video quality of your retro games. But to make a long story short for those who don't know, basically this box can accept the RGB SCART input here and then 
turn that analog signal into a digital one and output it via HDMI into a modern TV like this one here. For a lot of older systems, this really is one of the best ways for you to play these old games on a modern TV with reduced input lag, really sharp pixels, and deep rich colors. I think for all of the systems that I've bought SCART cables for, I've paid around $20, $25 when I've bought them online, usually through eBay or this other retailer in the United Kingdom. And this box, when I purchased it, was around $45. If you're curious to learn more about this box and SCART cables, I'll include some links down in the video description. Now, I should clarify, this is by no means the absolute best way to play your retro consoles on a modern TV through SCART. There's a device from Japan called the FrameMeister that a lot of retro game purists swear by. I myself don't have one of those because they're very expensive. Maybe at some point down the road I will, but for the time being I've got this guy and I've been a fan. This alone will make a big difference if you're using something like composite or even component for some systems. Lastly, if you want to learn much more specific and detailed information about SCART and RGB, I would recommend watching videos on the channel My Life in Gaming, Adam Korolik's channel, and visiting RetroRGB.com. The Super Nintendo I'm using is actually my girlfriend's console from her childhood. It also connects to that SCART box under the TV for 16-bit HDMI goodness, which is awesome for playing my favorite SNES games in here. Moving into more modern hardware, we've got the PlayStation 3 Slim, which is the same one I bought back in 2011. I really love the PS3 and it's where I've probably put the majority of my gaming time when it comes to Sony game consoles. This unit has a 500 gigabyte hard drive in it, which I cannibalized from its neighbor here, the PlayStation 4. Mine is obviously the standard non-PS4 Pro model and is also not the slim revision that debuted in 2016. When I bought it in late 2015, I put a two terabyte hard drive in this console and I installed the 500 gigabyte drive that came with it in my PS3. I don't have an Xbox One or a Switch, not yet anyway, so this is the platform where I do most of my gaming these days. Below the whole setup, I keep lots of controllers, cables, and travel cases for some of my handheld systems. As you can see, I keep my controllers in these Ziploc bags to prevent entanglements and keep them nice and clean. I've also got some other odds and ends that I don't really want to keep down here, but hey, at least they're put away. Up above, I've got a simple floating shelf where I keep my most frequently used controllers and handhelds. They display pretty nicely up here, and this shelf helps me save space on the entertainment center and couch, preventing a messier looking game room. It takes no time at all to pick up a game and start playing this way, and the acrylic stands from Rose Colored Gaming work perfectly. Well, I think that about covers it for this side of the room. Let's head over there and look at some games. This first shelf is occupied mostly by my PlayStation games. Vita, PS4, PS3, and PS1 titles make up most of it, but I've also saved space for all of these charging docks. I doubt this will always be a charging area for me because all the visible cables drive me a little crazy, but it is convenient. The fact that the chargers are all off to the side of the couch and slightly behind where I sit helps prevent any blinking charge indicators from distracting me while using the TV. On the very bottom, I keep my PS1 collection, my few PS2 games, and other non-Sony, non-Nintendo disc-based games and demos. Next up are these two bookcases. These come from Ikea, and I chose to get a set with these glass doors on them for a couple of reasons. One, it helps prevent dust and pet hair from my dog from getting into every nook and cranny. And two, they simply look cooler this way in my opinion. This first one contains all of my Super Nintendo and N64 boxes, Super Nintendo games, and Nintendo 64 carts. As my SNES and N64 collections grow, I'm sure I'll wind up relocating the boxes at the top, but for now this works. The one thing about these bookcases is they're really deep, which is kind of a cool thing and definitely something you would want to have more space, more volume to put stuff into it. But at the same time, it also kind of makes your game seem a little more sunken in, in a way, because it's so deep to get back in there. But the nice thing is when you have labels on your N64 carts and the Super Nintendo ones, it's not too big of a deal, so you can still read them. This brings us over to my GameCube collection, which obviously takes up most of this case. It's my biggest collection in terms of the number of games I have, and I think it's safe to say that it's my favorite disc-based Nintendo console overall. Below that, we've got the Wii games, Wii U, NES, Sega Genesis, and two Master System games. Continuing our path around the room, there's a small closet in the back where I keep some of my video equipment, like tripods, lights, and a mic stand. Eventually, I may wind up installing some narrow shelving back here, but for now I like having a designated spot for my bulkiest video stuff. 
On the other side, I've put up this rack where I can keep some of my travel bags, backpacks, and more camera gear. These first two drawers hold a variety of videography equipment, cables and supplies, and miscellaneous gaming accessories. This bottom one currently holds all of my Nintendo DS and 3DS games, along with an assortment of Nintendo handheld boxes and manuals. As a collector, I'm not crazy about stashing these games and boxes down here, so one of my goals is to eventually display them somewhere else in the room. This white shelf is my newest addition to the game room, and its purpose is pretty straightforward. Hold movies. When we first moved into this house, we'd been keeping all of our Blu-rays in this large wooden hutch downstairs, and as you can imagine, it was less than ideal for actually browsing and then making a selection for a movie to watch. This shelf also comes from Ikea. It is obviously very deep, so there's a lot of room to store stuff. This top shelf has box sets, collections, and family movies and animated films. And then down below here is action, sci-fi, and probably pretty obviously horror. I've been a horror fan for a long time, but in the last year or two, I've started to put together a modest collection of horror Blu-rays. They're fun to collect and to display around Halloween time. And to be honest, I find myself much more likely to watch these than I would stream them on Amazon or Netflix or what have you. Some of these are lesser known horror and sci-fi films, so it's kind of nice to have these on a shelf where I can just grab them and pop them in or introduce other people to them. Another feature of my game room that I'm thrilled to finally have is a more optimal place to create YouTube videos. At our old apartment, I was using an old hand-me-down desk that was very uncomfortable to sit at. At work, I'd gotten used to having the option to stand while at my office, so I wound up upgrading here at home to this standing desk from a company called Fully. This is their Jarvis model, and after a couple of months of using it, I absolutely love it. It's got four programmable presets, goes up and down in a matter of just a few seconds, and is fairly quiet while doing so. I definitely recommend this desk if you're ever looking into something like this for your own setup. The next important upgrade I've made since my last game room tour is this 34-inch ultra-wide Dell monitor. I had been using an old, small Dell monitor I'd gotten for free from my girlfriend's dad. Although that one was definitely helpful for editing, I craved more screen real estate, so I thought I might add a second monitor and mount the two alongside each other. This display really is beautiful, and thankfully it's wide enough that it effectively can function like two monitors anyway. With its width and ample resolution, it makes editing my project timelines much faster and easier. As a bonus, it makes games look pretty rad too. My laptop is a 17.3 inch MSI GT72 with 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM and a Core i7 processor. It's a few years old now, so it is by no means the best piece of tech around, but it still works pretty well, and I may be able to refresh it a bit with some hardware upgrades. That is, if I don't simply keep using it until I decide to pull the trigger eventually on a new system within the next couple of years. Either way, I'm glad to have this awesome desk and monitor set up already in place for years to come. The last point of interest within my game room is this glass display case in the corner. On the top, I keep my DSLR camera and my lenses so they're easy to grab and go, and inside I've put some semi-themed dioramas on each shelf that highlight some of my favorite series and characters in Nintendo history. I'm fairly certain I'll take some of these items back out and reconfigure most of the stuff in here, but this case gave me an easy way to get most of my amiibo in one place and have everything look like it made at least a little bit of sense. Now, some of you may be wondering, where are all the other systems you have games for, like the Wii U, the Genesis, or the Xbox? Don't worry, they're in the house. Most of them are stored away in a couple of big plastic totes in another room. It's an unfortunate reality of having only so much space I can allocate in the game room without adding more shelving, another TV, and potentially another power outlet or two. Nevertheless, they're thankfully not too far away, and it's just a matter of grabbing what I need and plugging it in. All right, guys, that was my updated game room tour, and I hope you enjoyed checking it out. The room definitely has some challenges and opportunities, but overall, I'm just really grateful and happy to have this awesome place where I can come in here, play these games, and enjoy this hobby. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new game room, and you can also leave any questions you might have for me down there too. If this was your first cross shop video and you liked what you saw, I'd love for you to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos coming your way. Thanks again for hanging out at Crosschop today. Thank you so much for subscribing, and as always, play heavy.